Say what you want about CM Punk. Love him or hate him. The guy is polarizing. Everybody wants to talk about him. And bully, what a reaction from the WWE Universe this past Saturday night in Chicago. An amazing reaction for CM Punk. However, I am not buying into this whole hell has frozen over. Oh, my God. I can't believe this happened. This is shocking. Yeah, it's a little shocking for some, but it's not like we haven't seen this happen in the world of WWE before. Eric Bischoff st stood side by side with Vince McMahon. Uh, the Ultimate Warrior came back to the WWE. The Bret Hart came back to the WWE and shook Shawn Michaels' hand. You want to talk about hell freezing over? Everybody kissing and making up after the Montreal screw job? That's hell freezing over to me. This is about a dude who, in CM Punk, who things didn't work out in the WWE the first time. I mean, as much as they did work out for Punk, they didn't work out for him towards the end. Then Punk disappears for a while. Then he comes to AEW, and we have the problems in AEW, and he comes back, and now he goes back to the WWE. Mark, you know this. Time does something in the wrestling business, okay? Time away does things that sometimes are very good. People mature. People see things from a different point of view. You're dealing with a different Triple H with different responsibilities, and you're dealing with a different CM Punk. I think you're dealing with a very motivated CM Punk right now. A motivated CM Punk who wants to... I'd say flip the world of wrestling off a la a stone call Steve Austin. And, and he's going to say, now watch what I'm going to do over here. I grew up. They grew up. We're on better ground together. And I think moving forward, we're going to see a better version of CM Punk. I don't have a crystal ball, but from what I can you know, reading the tea leaves or reading between the lines, I think this is going to work out. I think it'll work out for at least a year. And you know what? If we can get a good year out of Punk in the WWE, what more can we really ask for? You know, and Mark, before we get your reaction, really quick, a couple of things from what Bully just said. And what Bully said is absolutely true. When you look back at history, especially in the WWE, Bully, one thing you left out, like Bruno coming back, to the world of the WWE because Bruno for decades did nothing but bash Vince McMahon and the WWF and he came back into the fold and who Go put ahead. that together Triple H ding 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 uh, circle gets a square and Triple H was behind the ultimate warrior coming back and, and Triple H has been behind a lot of the changes that we saw from the past to the present but the one thing and and it sounds crazy guys but Bret Hart shaking hands with Shawn Michaels that was 13 years ago I think to a younger generation, and the great thing about pro wrestling and the world of the WWE is you are getting younger fans. There's a, a new generation of fans where this is something that's very, very new, and this is the first thing they're experienced something like this, what we saw on Saturday night with CM Punk. You could tell by the reaction of the crowd. So, so Mark, let me ask you, what were you feeling? What were you thinking on Saturday when you saw Punk's return? Uh, I, I just spoke to Punk, and I, I thought of all of the uh, issues that um, that have transpired and how, um, wow, they were able to sit down like grown-ups and work through whatever issues were to be able to go forward. And like Bully said, um, earth-shattering, um yes but impossible no i i mean vince mcmahon and hulk hogan um doing business again after all of the, the testimonies in court and yada 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 they're they're that's psh, yikes that's that's serious nothing's Nobody, impossible nope. nothing's impossible nothing is in the impossible world Dave, I looked at it like I was very, I was happy for him, but I also was, um, 
I was shocked because I had just talked to him. And, you know, like, you know, it never came up. We never alluded to it or I never, you know, asked any questions because that's not uh, what people do that know each other. Um, but I looked at it like when me and you talked and, and uh, I told you, hey, man, I'm uh, um, I'm going to go and check on some stuff and I went and handled my business and then you saw me on AEW. You yeah. have to keep your mouth shut. Like you can't tell everybody because people, even though you say, look, man, I would never tell. I'm not saying nothing, but people start doing stuff like this. Hey, it's about to be some big news going on tomorrow. And they just start spit like people start speculating. And then eventually somebody's going to be right. So like the best thing to do is to not say anything. And you can trust that the leaks will not come from him. I can't say that for everybody else. I, I Man, stuff has come up before, Dave. Bully, you know this for a fact. The way you find the uh, snitch is to tell the people individual things one at a time and never tell nobody else except for that person. And you'll find out it always comes out. It don't even have to be nothing real. You can make it up. Hey, we're bringing in so-and-so. Not really, but you just say you're doing it. That shit will be out on the 5 o'clock news <laughs> before evening. You got to figure out stuff. I know for a fact now, that punk won't be a leak. He won't be a leak because he knows that how valuable it is to have what he had. And that is complete confidence that something was going to get done and it was going to be a definite surprise to the world of wrestling. Well, Mark, let me ask you this. When you saw him on Saturday, did you feel like there's something right about this? You know, when we saw him before with AEW, it was a great moment because he had been gone from wrestling for eight years. But how did you feel when you saw him at War Games on Saturday? Is there something comfortable about the fact that he's back with the WWE? Or is that the biggest surprise is that he is with the WWE? What were your what were your feelings and your thoughts when you saw him on Saturday? I felt great because I watched Jacob. And Jacob was super excited. And Jacob represents the youth and the fan base of pro wrestling not just AEW and not just WWE, but he watches everything like us. We have to watch everything. And he was ecstatic. If that's what he did to the entire world of pro wrestling, wow, business is about to pick up. And, you know, it's interesting for a guy who's mired in such controversy and all of these perceptions, I'd be damned if the sun doesn't shine on CM Punk's ass uh, every once in a while, because every comeback that he makes or every important, you know, debut or re-debut always ends up in Chicago. Somehow all roads lead back to Chicago and this, you know, incredible reaction huh he's quartermain right he's Alan so quartermain. If, if, if for all of y'all that don't know who quartermain is google quartermain he was uh he was cursed in africa and anytime that he dies you could bury him in the soils of africa and he'll come back alive again one of the greatest uh stories in 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 the history of i mean huck finn you name something like Quartermain is right there. So, I mean, C, uh, CM Punk, very lucky that all of these things happen in Chicago, which obviously creates an incredible perception. And if you're going by the reception that he got the other night, I'm not quite sure how any city in the United States or any city in the world is not going to welcome back, welcome him back with open arms because... This 
was a different kind of response to me, Dave. And you guys know that I listen very closely. And when I heard the pop for punk's music, it reminded me of something. And I, but I couldn't put my finger on it. It wasn't a pro wrestling reaction. This was not something that I could compare to Steve Austin, which is my barometer for everything. You want to know if you're over? Go listen to the sounds the fans make when the the the, the glass shatters. That's how you know who, how over you are. This reminded me of something else, and I must have replayed Punk's um, uh, entrance about five times until it finally happened. Dave, I see you laughing right now, so I'm going to stop. I don't know if you want to go to break or if I, you want to guess. I'm going to make a guess. Okay. I'm going to make a guess because this is what I thought of, and I actually went back and replayed this moment to compare it, but this is what it reminded me of. Kirk Gibson's home run in the World Series when the when the Dodgers played the Oakland A's. Like, I, it was of, of shock because you thought that that was going to be an easy out, and then this guy who's limping to home plate is swinging the bat. And even when you look at the swing of the bat, it's like you can't believe that he actually hit a home run. But it was kind of like a combination of happiness and joy, but also surprise and shock. That was my guess. But, Bully, I'm obviously you're probably thinking. I, I got Go ahead, one, Mark. too. Go ahead, Mark. I think that, and I think that I, I got it, Dave. Go ahead. There was a big anticipation of this guy returning. He had retired and went away from basketball and decided that he was going to come back and play after a, a substantial amount of time and came back number 45 in the same city of Chicago, Mr. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. And if you remember him returning, how big a deal it was. And even though people knew when Michael Jordan came on the court, and they started the warm-ups, the, the crowd never st sat down. They stood up and cheered the whole time that he, he was out doing warm-ups. And then when they did the announcement and introduced Michael Jordan, it was different. It's not, it wasn't the same. When you, everybody listening to my voice, you get in, you go get home and you pull up Michael Jordan Returns introduction and you'll see that it was not a basketball introduction. It was the introduction of a megastar. And, and, and Punk is a megastar. And he got a different reaction than wrestling. Well, I'll say you guys are a very close. We're all basically on the same page because Punk's reaction, in my uh, opinion, wasn't a pro wrestling reaction. The sound that I compared it to, the pop that I compared it to, was world cup soccer when you are in the finals and your team scores and the roar of that crowd the other night was not a pop pop normally has treble treble is the high end of music this pop had bass this pop was the low end the visceral just um roar of a crowd the kind of reaction that is very very hard to find the lightning in a bottle moment the guttural sound of the reaction where people were like whoa like it came from the gut it was you know back in the attitude era you knew steve was in the building you knew it was only a matter of time before they hit his music. Thus, the, yeah, this people did not see coming. And the way the WWE went off the air with Survivor Series, where people thought they had seen everything, because Randy gave us a phenomenal 
final five minutes and we get the super cutter off the top of the stage and then we get the guys hugging we get the beauty shot if you were at home you saw the lower third you know world wrestling entertainment the copyright logo and then all of a sudden the remastered version of cult of personality and people if you don't understand what i'm saying as mark says go back and watch jordan i'm saying go back and watch don't watch listen Close your eyes and listen, and you'll hear the response coming from the guts of 17,000-plus people in Chicago. It's not a Road Warrior pop. It's not a Steve Austin pop. I'm not renaming it the CM Punk pop, but I'm saying it was the most memorable punk pop I have ever heard. It tops anything he's ever done in the WWE in the past. It tops any kind of pop in AEW. It was real. Well, that's why, like I mentioned to Gibson, in all three of these moments, you talk about great moments, is because you didn't see it coming. You didn't think that that was possible. You know, uh, 27 months ago when he showed up on Rampage, everybody in that building and everybody that was watching knew that Punk was coming out, coming down that entrance ramp. And you heard the punk chants before he even showed up. And then uh, such a great reaction. What a great moment that was 27 months ago. But on Saturday, I, I, I don't think anybody really saw it coming. There was rumors. There was innuendos. There was talking. But where it happened at the end of the show, like you mentioned, Bully, the trademark, if you're watching at home, was on the screen. You think the show is over. And there comes punk. It's it's a different type of vibe. It's a it's a surprise. It's like an oh my god moment. I did not see this coming. That's so rare nowadays in pro wrestling. You know, you know, Mark, you mentioned about keeping your mouth shut and not letting anybody know. The WWE and CM Punk did a phenomenal job of not letting anyone know that this was going to happen. So there was nothing leaked online. There was no buzz about it. Like, it was all just strictly speculation. And where they did it on the show, it was at a point where you thought, I guess this isn't happening. I guess this isn't going to happen. You know, and if it's not happening now, our discussion would be completely different right now on Busted Open if we didn't see Punk on Saturday. But, but Mark, to me, that was as organic and as beautiful a moment on Saturday that you get in pro wrestling. It was, um, I was, I was legit shocked and I, it's hard to shock me like that. Um, you know, not to mention, like I said, we just spoke like we, he could have dropped it on me. Nope. Didn't say smart. a word. And that was very smart. Even not that I would have said anything, because I wouldn't. Have. Um, but nonetheless, it was a shocking, explosive moment, and I can imagine I'm able to put everything in the box and hold it. What about the fan that is not studied like I am? How must they have felt, Dave? Well, I think, I think, Mark, what you just said about Jacob is the perfect example. You're sitting with your son. He couldn't hold it. He's young. He's, he's somebody who, think about that. He grew up and lived with a WWE Hall of Famer, one of the, the most elite athletes in the world. That's what Jacob, that's the world that Jacob lived in, but he's still such a fan, and that was such a great moment that even for Jacob Henry, he got that excited like he did on Saturday night. That's the beauty of pro wrestling. That's the art form of pro wrestling. That's why we love it. Bully, I'll go to you first. Your thoughts on what Triple H had to say Saturday night on the CM Punk return. First things first, this is the first time I'm hearing Triple H's comments. I did not watch the press conference. I did not read about the press conference. Nothing. I saw I saw Cody's imitation of Triple H. That's the most I saw at the press conference. Um, I started off the show by talking about how Time away works wonders in the wrestling business. I talked about how people mature in the wrestling business. I talk about how I talked about how people grow up over time. And lo and behold, Triple H said the same exact 
thing. When you are in this business long enough, a la myself, Mark Henry, Triple H, you'll, you're basically listening to the same words come out of our mouths because we were brought up the correct way in the business. And we understand that the only thing that matters is good business. Did you hear any emotion in Triple H's voice, Dave? No. Not an ounce. You know why? It's business. business. Did you hear him when he when he was talking about CM Punk and he's like, whether you love him, whether you hate him, whether, um, you know, whatever Triple H was referring to. Re Triple H also said, you can't deny the fact that this kid, his name is on the tip of everybody's tongue. People are talking about him. He's a conversation starter. Basically, what Triple H is saying is you can't stop rock and roll. And that's what I thought to myself during Punk's entrance. And you can't stop rock and roll, as we know, is a very popular um, Twisted Sister song. When fans are that into you, when you have made that type of an emotional connection with a fan base, it doesn't matter where or when you are going to pop back up because Owners, bookers, creative know that the people are clamoring for it and you can't deny it and you can't stop it. In this case, CM Punk is rock and roll and nobody was stopping what happened at Survivor Series. It was a great moment and you're absolutely right. It's business and whether Triple H likes, doesn't like, loves, hates CM Punk. He did what was best for business, bringing CM Punk on Saturday. Mark, what were your thoughts when you heard what Triple H had to say? My, my thoughts, Dave, is nobody wants to be on the wrong side of history. As it relates to pro wrestling, sports entertainment, and however you view the business, what you call it, nobody wants to be on the wrong side. And you cannot let your pride get in the way of that. You cannot let the fact that my space and my spot in the top six get in the way of that. You have to let the business be the one that feeds off everybody's work and effort and yes there are some people at the top that's not going to be happy because they're going to get less minutes they're going to have to acquiesce to the new addition to the company and there's a lot of people that will take their ball and go home hell steve austin took his ball and went home before. It happens. But what happened after that? Came back. Go away, go away for a little while, come back. You know what? My bad. I let my pride get in the way of the business. Everybody always comes back. <laughs> they always realize the business is bigger than me. I don't want to be on the wrong side, not side as a company, but side as an attitude side as do I, did I negatively affect the business? Damn. I didn't want to do that. Wow. Nobody point, wants Mark. to be that guy. Yeah. And the ones that do, we don't give a shit about them anyway. The ones that, Oh, I'm going to retire. If this person comes back, the ones that, you know what, if he's here, I don't want to be here. Take your ass home then because the business is going to roll and roll and roll with or without you. This it's, is it's, an opportunity for CM Punk to wash away all the bad. All the ill. That, yeah. Whether it's perception or reality that are in people's mouths. This is time to say, I grew up, 
WWE grew up, and now we can do great business together. There's hey, no but- reason. There's no reason for me to believe that this time it won't work out. Because, Mark, Punk would have to be a full-blown idiot to screw up on his side. Yes or no? Right. And he, and he won't. And he's not. Right. And the WWE would be a bunch of idiots to put Punk in the same positions they put him in last time where he didn't feel comfortable. Right. So, listen, w- w- they know what makes him tick. He's got, listen, big stars get catered to, whether it's in the movies, whether it's in sports, no matter where it is. You learn what makes a star tick, and you try to keep them as happy as possible. I'm not saying Punk deserves preferential treatment. What I'm saying is, hey, let's put this guy in positions to shine and keep him as happy as possible, just like we want to keep all the talent as happy as possible so we can have a main event performer in unique stories and situations, which is going to put even more asses in seats, which is going to even, even do more buy rates. Well, and, and, and I look at it this way, Bully. First of all, imagine if Saturday never happened. You know, what would the perception of Punk be if Punk's wrestling career ended in August at All In in Wembley? People's perception of CM Punk would be completely different. This is his chance. And we know he loves the sport of pro wrestling. We know he's passionate about it. This is an opportunity for him to wash away all those things. Plus, Bully, I'm, I'm going to just talk as Dave LaGreca, the fan, because I don't know CM Punk. I, I interviewed him a couple of times. I met him a couple of times. I do not know him. Bully, you've said on the air before that, man, I've never had a bad interaction with CM Punk. For the most part, all your interactions with CM Punk have, have been positive ones, correct? Yes. Mark Henry is somebody that I know loves CM Punk, has a great relationship with PM, CM Punk, loves CM Punk. Mickey James is going to join us in hour three this morning. I know she had a great relationship with CM Punk. Thunder Rosa, I know, had a great relation with CM Punk. So the people that I know that I work closely with have nothing but good things to say about the man. So go ahead, Mark. Dave, this is how I judge whether or not I, I can really truly have an understanding and be friends with somebody is if I'm able to say something that I know is not going to be, it's not going to be welcome with open arms and we can get it all out. And then we'll hug afterwards and go, Hey, you know, it wasn't personal, right? Like, I, this just had to be said. Like, I, I would feel like shit if I went away from you and I didn't tell you how I truly felt. And they and they, they greet you like, you know what, man? I, I appreciate it. Thank you. And they hug you. We've argued before. We've disagreed before. We have different philosophies on things. But you know what? At the end of it, hey, bro. It's over. Dave, Mark. Bully and I. I, 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 We always agree. Me and Mark completely disagree on the airport situation with wrestlers about Mm -hmm. getting hounded by fans at the airports. We are on completely opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to this point. Mark, if I called you later on today and I said I just landed in Austin, Texas, what would you do? I would probably come get you. And then where are we going? To a barbecue place? Mark's point is, it's business. We can disagree on things, but when we truly know each other and the real person inside, business is one thing and personal is another. And who taught us that it's just business, Mark? Vince. Vince McMahon. See, see Dave, how the same words come out of him. When you're brought up a certain way in this business, which is the right way, that's when you become a professional. Not all this other shit that's watering down the business and, and, and making it 
worse, not better, in certain aspects. And Hunter, Hunter's good. good at it, too. Me and Hunter, we ain't always agree on everything. Woo-hoo. Shit, we argued about stuff that, man, it shouldn't even been argued about. It was pride. It was it was like I, I could hear Marcellus Wallace from Pulp Fiction talking. That's pride fucking with you. Leave it alone. If it come to your head, disregard it. That's what I should have done. But my pride wouldn't let me. But just like Triple H said, if you are the same person now as you were 10 years ago, something went wrong. You failed. You have to evolve and get better. That's for everybody listening to this show. It don't have nothing to do with wrestling. Life, family, love, hate, whatever it is. You got to change and evolve. That's what makes everybody better. That was makes the products better. It makes the the Slim Jim reads better. Like you, you got to do something different. Can't live in the past. And I feel like going forward, every talent that's got an issue, they're gonna have to go sit in front of Triple H. They're gonna have to go and sit in front of Nick Khan, and they're gonna tell them, guys, this is the business. You either get with it or get gone because the business is going to roll without you and we want you here because you're valuable. I've been in those meetings and I've been a fly on the wall. I was a fly on the wall. I wasn't a rock. I wasn't Steve Austin. I wasn't Ron Simmons at that time. But I got to sit there and hear how it's going to be done. This is how it's going to work out. And it wasn't really a ask. <laughs> it's like, Bubba, this is what we're going to do. You had them conversations, haven't you? Yep. And then as soon as that conversation is over, then you get the, okay, we, we, we got everything figured out. Y'all have a good day. Hey, uh, How's the family? Business is over now. Now we're going to talk about how's your family? How you feeling? You good? Yeah, I'm all right, man. No, no. Tell the truth. We're not, we're not talking business. That's, that's, the, that's what the business is supposed to be. As a leader, as a booker, as, a, as somebody that runs the company, you got to be able to separate business from the personal because you're dealing with these fragile egos and everybody want to be on top, but everybody can't be. Not at the same time. You got to wait your turn. And after that reaction the other night, there ain't one ego in that locker room who is going to step up and go, damn it, if he's here, I'm leaving. Nobody. Who's going to leave? Who's going to leave the WWE right now and the business that it's doing and the great perception it has all over the world? Who's leaving because Phil Brooks came back? Well, I, I would think, Bully and Mark, if there was somebody who was complaining about CM Punk and CM Punk returning and is, vo- and is vocal about the fact that he's that he's back... All you have to do is go back to Saturday. Can the person that's complaining get the kind of reaction that CM Punk got on Saturday? Because probably if you can't, then you probably should keep your mouth shut. Because there's very few people in the world of pro wrestling that can get the reaction that CM Punk did on Saturday. Did you hear any boos? I heard no boos. I heard no boos. Not a one. Did you see anybody booing did you see anybody in that crowd with anything less than the look of adulation on their face i did not see it Seventeen thousand plus were going buck wild for it and yes you can give me the thing that it was in chicago okay i'll let you have that but i'm sorry unless i hear from somebody that was there 
who tells us, I was standing on my feet and booing with two thumbs down. I don't believe it. And I even if they I, were bullied, I know what I heard. who cares? And I yeah. heard. And they, like I, I, I saw people crying. Now, I made some people cry, but it was usually because I told them about their mama. <laughs> Something very inappropriate. And Dave, I Punk believe has the ability to make people grown as men. Michael Jackson cry. Like Punk has got it. Steve Austin's got it. The Rock had it. Undertaker's got it. The Hulk Hogan had it. Ric Flair. There's certain people that have that ability. And Punk is one of them. You can't be mad that he got the gift. You can't be mad. Most most polarized. I mean, you guys would agree. Most polarizing wrestler in the last twenty five years. Sure, sure. Twenty five. Top three, I, I guess. Top three. I mean, he's a, like you said it earlier. He's a mega. You would have star. to go back. He's a star. To be Ric Flair. Uh, you'd have to go back thirty years. For yeah, twenty five years, uh, yeah, top three. Um, unbelievable, huh? Yeah, we sitting here on the prefaces of what the business is going to look like in the next five, let's say five years. What do we have in store for us? And Triple H said it best, said it just like that. Well, we'll see. We'll, we, we'll see. So the business, I guess his deal is three to five years. I mean, we'll find, so, we'll find out. We'll find I mean, out. tonight is going to be very important. Oh my gosh. Tonight, yes. Listen, wow. we got what we got on Saturday at Survivor Series, but tonight is going to be very important. And this is, I, oof, if it's me, show tonight. <laughs> if it's me, I, I think I'd love to see them start the show with him. They ended the show with him last time uh, at Survivor Series. I'd love to see them start the show, but I understand the argument for holding off on him. Maybe you start with Seth and Punk, something like that. Nashville is going to be the barometer tonight for how much the WWE Universe is going to be willing to welcome back CM Punk.